Hello and welcome to the series of The Journey to TEDx Amy Top Women, where we're speaking to all the lovely uh, speakers that were at the TEDx Amy Top Women event in December 2019. Today I am joined by the incredible, the amazing, the very northern, and you'll find out why, <laughs> Wendy Sneddon. So um, obviously they know who you are now, but who are you really, Wendy? Where are you and what do you do, please? Okay, so I am based in Scotland, just north of Edinburgh. Um, and I've been up here 30 years, despite my uh, very southern Southampton accent, which is where I was born originally. Um, in terms of what I do, I'm a property developer and uh, set up a property company a few years ago, and I'm building a portfolio of properties. Very good, very good. And how did you find out about TEDx Only Top Women, and why did you want to do the talk? I've been involved with the Find Your Why Foundation for about five years um, and I've gone through quite a lot of um, the training programs that you've provided, found my why, worked on how I can use my why um, to become more successful and um, you've helped me quite a lot in terms of developing my speaking and presentation skills and, and the confidence to kind of go out there and do more. Um, so when you announced the opportunity to speak on the TEDx stage, that was that was really exciting. Um, so it was from you that, uh, that I heard all about it. Being a TED fan for years, um, never dreamed for a moment that uh, I would have the opportunity to, uh, to get involved. Uh, we've got something going on with the microphone, but we'll carry on. It's, it sounds like you've got waves crashing. <laughs> so I don't know what that is, but we'll carry on because it, it's in keeping with your lighthouse picture and your beach picture <laughs> behind. It's kind of like we've got some sort of like sound effect going on, <laughs> which is lovely. Uh, yeah, we, um, I mean, we go back, as you said, about five years. And it was really interesting when I first met you because I was on stage in Canada. You were in the audience because you'd just written uh, your, your book and you were going to um, basically get an award for having written your book, weren't you? And yeah. you were sitting in the audience. I remember afterwards when we talked, because at that stage I invited, you know, a volunteer to come on stage and it was almost like you were like, I would never have done that, but like for some reason, you mm -hmm. found yourself on stage next to me. And um, we've not been able to get rid of each other since, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, and then I remember you were talking, obviously I'd been involved with a lot of public speaking and you hadn't come that route, you know, you didn't meet me via that, uh, that channel, if you like. Mm -hmm. So um, when you said to me, I've been given an opportunity to stand on the BAFTA stage, uh, can you help me, you know, to create my story, really? I was like, oh, I love stories anyway. So, yeah, let's do that. Um, and I remember seeing you on that stage and you were brilliant, you know, like really, you've got this really kind of calmness around you, as well as like this really sort of like strong, uh, subtle power. So not like a gobshite like me, but just really subtle power. Uh, and that was really brilliant. And then, of course, when the TEDx came along, um, you know, what can I say? You know, if you're in my community and, and I know that you've got a really worthwhile, you know, idea to share, then it made sense that it would be for you. So what was it that you chose? Because obviously, as you've said, you know, you've, you know, you've built your uh, property um, you know, empire, for want of a better word. And yet there's a really, um, a really lovely reason why you do that, which was linked with the TED Talk. Would you like to share what your TED Talk was about? Yeah, so um, I started life as a veterinary nurse and, uh, and, and I've always really worked with animals um, throughout my career. Um, and as I kind of, um, I think it was in about 2001, um, got involved with a group called the Lynx Group who were raising awareness of the link between animal abuse and human abuse. And this was it just first coming out um, to the veterinary profession. So it was quite shocking. Um, and having worked in practices where I'd seen injuries that were dubious, um, you know, at that stage, because we didn't know anything about non-accidental injuries and why would people do that kind of thing to, to animals? Um, so it was a real eye-opener sort of learning about it. I got involved with the Lynx Group. I've been the secretary for about 15 years um, and, uh, and worked on lots of different projects. But one of the things that happens with um, in violent households is um, people don't leave because they don't want to leave their pets behind. And refuges and temporary accommodation often can't take pets. People can't take their pets there with them. So it means the family splitting up. It means they either go into foster care um, or, or they leave the pets behind and, and, and that's not an option for most families and 
we know of, of, of women that have been killed as a result of staying in a relationship longer, um, even though we knew they had plans to leave, but they couldn't leave. Yeah. So it, it occurred to me that um, one of the things we could be doing is, is finding, uh, building pet-friendly refuges. And I'd already started an, getting an interest in developing property. And I could see, well, if I've got these skills and I can create a business for myself, there must be something I could do to help. So my kind of long-term goal is to work in that kind of area and create pet-friendly refuges. Yeah. And again, you know, through TED, you know, through the amazing platform that TED have, have supplied for us, um, you know, and through the TEDx Only Top Women, we have to say all the words, of course, um, event, it's really brought a lot of awareness. I mean, I remember, you know, in fact, let's let's go back to the day. So it's the 13th of December, um, you know, TED, TEDx is, is taking place, Only Top Women event. And so you've arrived at the venue. Just talk me through the day and, and just, just how you were feeling, what was going on in your mind, you know, as you arrived through your speech and also after your speech, just share with the uh, listeners, viewers, what was going on for you. Yeah. So I think we got to the venue and um, just as people were starting to arrive and uh, we brought some um, goodies to put in bags to give out to people that had come along to, to watch. And um, when you walked into the room, it was very daunting because suddenly it's very real. We had the, the big shoe sit in there, the, the TEDx letters, um, across the room and all the, the kind of cameras and the lighting and um, yeah I was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> it's real looked, it's real yeah and I looked at the schedule and I wasn't on till after lunch so that kind of I was I breathed a bit of a sigh of relief at that um, uh, and in some ways it was good to be on after lunch but in other ways it meant I you know obviously worried for the <laughs> for the for the whole of the morning um but listen we were there obviously listening to all the other amazing TEDx speakers and that took my mind off it completely because every single person there was absolutely amazing and, and all had something amazing to share so it was a really great day so you're waiting by the AV you've got your microphone on you're looking like Madonna and um you're about to go on can you remember what was going through your mind at the time um I, I suddenly realized that whilst I had practiced, because I had put some slides together, um, and uh, whilst I realized I had sat in front of my computer and practiced, I hadn't actually stood up. And then all those things are going through my head, what if the slides don't move and, and all of that. But I had um, some of my fellow um, wise women behind me, I was getting little pats on the back, a little shoulder massage, <laughs> and, uh, and lots of support and encouragement. Um, and I think, because I know so few people know about the link or understand it, it was really important to be able to get out there and, and get the, tell people the, the story in a way that they, they got it, um, because we really need to spread the word. Yeah, I remember specifically uh, one part, I don't want to spoil it for the viewers, because um, I want them to, you know, to, to go and to watch your video, because I want to see if they have the same reaction. But there's one, uh, one place where just the sound that came from the room was just incredible um you know and as a speaker coach i kind of i, I kind of went she's nailed it you know in a, in a positive way like and i was like that has just reached like the hearts of people if you like um and i remember as i'm doing now actually just tearing up because it's like wow that's such a powerful um you know i'm back in the room and i'm listening to you and i can hear that sound in, in my mind and I was like, wow, that, that's what this is about. You know, that's what TED's about. It's about sharing ideas that are worth sharing, whether or not that's for a really positive, um, you know, reason or to shock, uh, you know, to, to make people aware so that they bring it to their awareness, they can do something about it. So uh, I want to thank you on behalf of everybody in that audience, because it was just like, wow, do you know what I mean? Um, and if you're, if you're listening to us, you're watching us, you know, click on the link at the end of the interview <laughs> uh, and have a look at, at uh, Wendy's talk and just see if it really affects you in the way that, uh, you know, I, I mind read that it affected everybody with a little bit of a help from the noise that came, came from the room at that stage. So, so you're in the middle of the room, you've, you, you know, you've had this reaction yes. and I know that you kind of, you know, you pause to take that in. And at that stage, what are you thinking? Because I've just shared what I was thinking. Well, well, p pausing really to kind of um, keep myself together because when I, whenever I've rehearsed this, I've always ended up in tears. Yeah. So it was really important that I kind of I didn't 
show too much emotion at that stage because I wanted to get through the rest of the, the rest of the story. So it, it was really, um, I heard the gasp and thought, oh, blimey. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I had to take a deep breath um, to kind of compose myself to continue and uh, and get to the end. Yeah, 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 good stuff. And so then you've come off stage. Uh, the the uh, I gave everybody fifteen minutes only because I know I know most of you too well to know that eighteen minutes some people would have gone over. So uh, and and at the same time I wanted to give as many people you know an opportunity without you know burning the midnight oil if you like. We were asking the audience you know to sit through twenty presentations. Um, you know, with 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 gaps and uh, and breaks and and a bit of a musical interlude as well. That was still a big ask, really. And yet, I know that at the end of it, you know, people coming up saying, you know, I actually didn't sleep very well last night, and um, so I was worried I was going to fall asleep. But all these speakers have just been such a variety of topics. You know, really like kept me awake. So I don't want to thank you for that. Um, so you've had your fifteen minutes of fame, if you like, and you're coming off stage. How are you feeling now? Oh, the the sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> that I delivered was over and then there's um it kind of I, I sat I just sat down and thought thank goodness for that um and I think we, we had a break of about 10 15 after the next speaker um, and loads of people came up to kind of congratulate me and and, and they were, nearly all of them were saying I'd never thought of that before and that was what was really incredible how many people now know about it yeah which is brilliant is it really really amazing so um so in in terms of you know what happens next you know i've got to um you know get the videos from the videographer which was the amazing rebecca from rap media um we've got to make sure we top and tail them you know um, in keeping with ted's uh, rules and regulations of course and then i think it was around about the 6th of january and i'm saying you know look now i'm starting to submit so we just have to wait for Ted, you know, to approve or or or, or not in the in case, you know, is it in keeping with Ted? Uh, obviously, they've got uh, you know a, mm -hmm. a brand to, to keep as well. So, um, yours was actually one of the first ones to be approved, wasn't it? So, how was that feeling when we got a little WhatsApp group? So everyone was being really helpful, like sharing them. It's up, it's up, Wendy. <laughs> it, it was amazing, and I think so. That was in January, so there was about five or six weeks before it went on, and in between that time I was a bit kind of like oh my goodness what are people going to think when they see me saying all of that um and part of me was like I don't really care what happens now I stood on the TEDx stage and, and delivered that um and, and so that was a feeling so so when it pops up in the group that um mine had been um, published I was just I was blown away and I think within a week I had uh, 1200 views um which is incredible i think it's up at about 1600 now um but uh yeah it was an amazing feeling yeah because i know i know before because the way that it worked i'd ask you all to send me a video or you know or a recording of, of what you'd done and we were very mindful you know in in you know sticking to what was allowed and what wasn't allowed in terms of the presentation um so i know we'd had a, a few conversations about what might have to come out what could stay in um, you know, generally making sure that we, we stuck to the rules really um, and so I know when yours came up and I was just like you know wow you know look at this moment in time there's 1600 people out there that potentially didn't know anything about this that you've now reached and I'm sure that they've told at least one person you know if not 10 people so now you start to think about the you know the ripple effect uh, of, of what's happened just because you know, you know, you know you, you, well not because we met and then you continue to work with me and you know and you, you've been such a great support to us in the Find Your Wife Foundation as well so now it's great to, to see you you know shining your light on other people as well which is brilliant so in terms of um, you know your talks out there now you know um, what, what would be the biggest blocks or barriers that you think that you might have that might have put you off uh, doing TEDx, what 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 was the what, what was what was going on that you might want to share with the audience because they might be the same. You know. Sure. So um, when you first put it, put, first announced that you were going to um, put this event on, and you were looking for people to come forward as, as speakers, I mean, th there's a lot of members in the group, and because I um, do a bit of facilitation with you and I help um, support you guys. I kind of thought well, it's not really fair of me to take up a place. So I didn't initially send you anything. 
And it wasn't until we had a chat about that afterwards, I realized that I still need to go ahead because it's not about me, it's about the message I've got. Yeah. And it's a really important message to get out there. So I did then put together um, a video. And, uh, and of course, the other thing that made me slightly nervous is um, there's a number of people in our network who have been through the public speakers um, training. Um, and I, I've, all the training I've done has been with you and it's been fantastic, but I did feel a little, um, I can't think of the right word, <laughs> felt a little nervous being amongst all these experts in public speaking. Um, and, uh, but actually what you taught me um, over the last couple of years, you've given me all the skills and support and confidence I need um, and I'm just as good as the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and, and the idea is, you know, look, the, the, you, know, you don't necessarily have to go through any formal training as such to be passionate about something. So, you know, that's what I'm looking at. When Ted said to me, you know, um, you know why did you choose the people that you chose? Well, I, I'm choosing them because I know that, first of all, they've got a message that's really important to them or and, and or, in fact, you know, to the world. And at the same time, you know, authenticity is key these days. You know, so, you know, I know this from when I first started doing public speaking, you know, trying to round out all the vowels and speak properly, you know, like what I thought one had to do. It's absolute bollocks, you know what I mean? Quite frankly, you know, the, the, the day that I went on stage and tried to remember how to speak normally, interesting, go on stage, something mysteriously was happening, you know, turned out to be, um, you know, the reason why people were coming to me and going, oh my God, like, you know, I mean, I remember someone saying to me, um, until I met you, Cheryl, I, I thought I was too old, too fat, and too ugly. Um, but now I've met you, I believe anything's possible. And, and in that moment, <laughs> I thought, I think that's a compliment. And at the same time, I knew what she meant because she meant, you know, you're just being you, you're not trying to be anything you're not. Because quite frankly, trying to be somebody that you're not must be bloody hard work. It certainly was when I was first getting on stage. So you had that natural uh, speaking bit. Yes, of course, there are certain ways you can say things. Um, you know, when I was looking at the TED, um, you know, talks, uh, you know, in, in order to help people to get, you know, what, what I consider to be like the best presentation they could get right there, right then. Um, you know, a lot of the people who've been, um, you know, taught um, in the other, um, you know, speaker way um, weren't head ready. You know, they were, they were brilliant at what they were doing in terms of the category and the, and the rules and regulations around, you know, how to speak in public if you want to sell. But we weren't selling, you know, we were selling a couple of, yes, that's not true, actually. We were selling ideas. And that's a different way from selling a product, of course. Um, so, yeah, so you were incredible and you were amazing, just as you are every time I've seen you. You know, whether or not you're standing in front of, you know, uh, 10, 10 women in my living room, you know, doing an event and helping with the facilitation to standing on the BAFTAs or the TEDx stage. Do you know what I mean? so, 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 so. Um, and so if anybody else is out there and they're looking, um, you know, at this video now, I mean, in terms of what's happened since, you know, what, what, what are the positives that you've gained from having, you know, completed a TEDx video? So opportunities have come along. Um, so I, um, I worked, I did, I did my property training a few years ago and was contacted by uh, somebody from that company who'd seen the TEDx speaking and said, oh, would you be interested in doing some work with us? Um, and so that's opened doors in terms of, of work. And because of, um, because of people have seen the TEDx talk, I've been asked to speak at a number of different events um, around the same subject so it's really it's opened up doors and opportunities for me it's been amazing yeah, brilliant. and so if anybody is thinking about doing a TEDx talk you know whether that be you know a TEDx women talk or a TED a TEDx TED you tend to be invited TEDx you can apply of course what would you say to them if they're having a you know a little bit of second thoughts they're not quite sure if they should do it yeah. um, I'd say I'd say absolutely sign up for it um, and then work through the things that are going to hold you back and that's exactly what you guys did for us you know you helped us to um work through and um, putting the, the framework together and making sure that we had um the right components that ted required um, and that we were able to deliver it in a way that was compelling and uh, and help the audience um, and so, yeah, I, I would highly recommend getting some coaching on speaking if you've never spoken before, because um, it will make a world of difference. Um, when, you, when you go on the TEDx, it's kind of one chance. 
So it's really worth, I would say, investing in getting some training to make that, that, that opportunity really count. Brilliant. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. If you want to watch Wendy's uh, TEDx talk, what was the name of the talk? It was um, How Domestic Abuse Affects Pets. Yes, so How, how Domestic Abuse Affects Pets. Click on the link that's in this um, lovely uh, video, the video around this video and uh, yeah just see whether or not you do the gasp in the place where everybody else did too. Wendy thank you so much thank you for sharing next time we're going to meet another lovely wise woman or oh, could it be a wise man because we did have a wise man uh, and a wise speaker on the next video um, but what topic will that be well we'll have to check in and find out so see you soon take care Bye.